Hey everybody, coming at you with book 11. So, very early in the book, lines 56 through 60, we see Odysseus finds his comrade. And of course, Odysseus, his comrade, goes by the name of Elpinor. And when he finds Elpinor, Elpinor tells him that he was left unburied back at the house of Circe. And Odysseus, upon seeing his friend, weeps and sobs un almost uncontrollably. And to answer the question about why the poet might include this scene, to me, this is to show that there are two sides to Odysseus, or really two sides to any Homeric hero. We see the very brave, strategic Odysseus to navigate to the underworld, but here we also see the fragile, emotional Odysseus that weeps when he sees a fallen friend. So, upon talking to Elpinor, Elpinor explains that he drunkenly fell off the roof, and he asked to be burned in full armor. And this contributes to the theme of burial rites, and how important it is for Elpinor to be remembered not for being silly and drunkenly falling off the roof, but for being a very brave soldier and fighting heroically at Troy and across many other battles before him. Later, Odysseus finds his mother... And he asks about his wife and child, and upon hearing this question, his mother tells him that she is suffering back at Ithaca, and that the polis is broken, and that his entire family is just under duress. And this propels the epic forward because it inspires his heart to return to the broken polis, and hopefully restore it.
In book 12, lines 1 through 165, there are three key questions. The first one is, what does Odysseus and his men do when they return to Circe's island, and how does this demonstrate the importance of Greek culture? So, uh, at the very beginning of book 12, lines 1 through 15, uh, it says that when they returned to Circe's island, they uh, retrieved Elponor's body, cremated him, and then buried him with his honor. Now, uh, the, way, the reason this shows the importance of Greek culture is because that was a very honorable way to be buried, but Elpenor died a very embarrassing way by uh, falling off a ladder and breaking his neck when he was drunk. Uh, the second question is, what does Odysseus say to Circe after she explains skill and Charybdis, and how does this contradict his character from the rest of the book? So in lines 124 and 125, he says, Deadly Charybdis, can't I possibly cut and run from her, and still fight Scylla off when Scylla strikes my men? So this shows him being stubborn because he isn't willing to do any of the choices that Circe provided him, which was to either go through Charybdis or go uh, through Scylla's uh, path. Uh, this contradicts his character from the rest of the book because he he, um, because he's seen more as a clever and cunning person throughout the book. Uh, question number three is, what does Circe do to Odysseus and his men, and how does this relate to Xenia? So, at, in lines uh, 15 and 15 through 30, it says, uh, she welcomes them back into, uh, into her house and offers them to stay and then she'll give him instruct, instructions on where to go after that. Now, this is, uh, this is different from Xenia because Xenia is offering your house to strangers to help them recover and uh, continue their next journey, but she already knows them, so it shows that she and Odysseus have a very good friendship if she's willing to let them stay at her house again. So what we'll be talking about are in Book 12, in the middle section of lines 166 through 327. So, the first question is, did Odysseus tell, uh, tell his crew and what he, tell his crew what he and Cer Cersei talked about and how does this show his expository tone and level-headedness? Um, this question will be in, li in lines 167 through 180. So, Odysseus did tell his crew what uh, they were talking about, what Circe and Odysseus were talking about, and Circe was mostly just telling Odysseus what is to come, and that is the creatures and beings that Odysseus will face. Um, Odysseus will face while going back home, and this. Uh, he this shows Odysseus ex expository tone because when Odysseus tells his shipmates what they were talking about uh, he says it he says it in a way for example first she warns we must steer clear of the sirens their enchanting songs and so on and it also shows his level headedness because he tells his Crew, his crew that what is like what is about to happen and what is and what um, what they need to expect the second question starts in lines 302 through 318 and the question is what did your Yuri locus tell Odysseus in these lines and why would this be necessary for Odysseus and Yuri locus right now is arguing or not really arguing, but he is just asking for a break, and not only for himself, but for his his uh, other shipmates. And and uh, and why would this be necessary for Odysseus? Well, this would be necessary for Odysseus because I feel like he he made a mistake of not already stopping and taking a break because he is not. He, he does not know everything. He is immortal. He makes mistakes like every other human. And, uh, he is mortal, my bad. Making mistakes like every other human. 
and uh, Odysseus needs a break after he fought off he fought off and went through multiple creatures already and and beings and so with uh, during those uh, when he was going through those creatures he lost already multiple shipmates and I think they just need a break to recharge their batteries and move forth move on forth to their final obstacle which will be their most difficult one the next question starts in lines 322 through 327 and the question is what did Odysseus tell his crew not to do in these lines and why is he so serious about this matter well uh, once Odysseus agreed to uh, to uh, uh, just camp there for the night and recharge their batteries um, they he asked that if they come near a herd of cattle or a fine flock of sheep um, they um, they should not kill it at all they should not slaughter it and they should just eat in peace as he says content with the food immortal uh, with the food immortal Circe gave us so uh, he is very serious about this matter because where they are heading is where um, where um where the uh, sun god if I am not mistaken Wait, let me find the page here. Oh, here it is. So, it says that Lord Hyperion keeps his fine cattle broad in the burrow and flocks of purebred sheep. Um, yes, so, this, uh, Lord Hyperion is very, um, he loves his sheep, he takes very good care of them, so, if, so if, um, his, one of his, one of Odysseus's, uh, one of the people in his crew, if they, if they just slaughtered an, one of the, uh, sheep, then they would put him in, worse matters than they are in already so yeah that's the end for book 12 the middle section lines 166 through 327 move on to the final part of book 12 starting with Odysseus's warning so on Helios's island Odysseus warns all of his men not to eat the sacred cattle because of all the curses that would come with that basically and this is really different than him on Circe's island because on Circe's island he is very much a, a risk taker where now he's more like sensible and cautious and I think this is because of Cilio e killing a lot of his men that he's just I guess changed a bit in the way he sees honor and glory. He's just now more concerned about the safety of him and his men and getting to Ithaca. The next segment is um, what Odysseus is doing when his men eat Helios's sacred cattle and how this affects like the dangers of leadership. So again, just like with the bag of, win of winds, um, Odysseus, Odysseus is sleeping and his crew more more or less second guesses him and decides to eat the cattle because they'd rather die at the hands of the gods than of starvation, which is more honor and glory here. You'd rather die of one cause that's, I guess, more honorable than start. If you die starving, that's kind of lame in there, you know. So with leadership here, Odysseus constantly has to be with his crew to make sure that they are doing the right thing so it really shows how important Odysseus is that even if he's not there for a split second all of a sudden they ruin pretty much everything for the crew 
and then that can lead us to what happens to his men. So they get um, sent by wind back to Cilia and Charboius. I don't know how to say that, but anyway, this shows that the, the role of the gods in this epic is that Odysseus is the only one survive, that, who survives, and that's because he doesn't eat the cattle. So the gods see that it's unfair and unjust to kill him for this offense that he did not commit. And also just how, like, his crew kind of had it come in because they keep kind of messing Odysseus up right when they're close to home. They just kind of ruin everything for him. So, yeah, that's going to be...